127th Contact Sunday, February 3, 1980, 7.03 p.m., pages 428, 438. Billy says it's nice that you've come today. I've been waiting for it. You'll probably never skip this day, right? Samyaza says sure, if it is possible for me, I will never let this day go, without visiting you. Billy says I was always of the opinion that all of you, and so including you, don't take a birthday so devilishly seriously, like the human beings of this crazed world. Samyaza says I also don't do that but I know that you are just as very happy to see me on your birthday as I am happy to be able to visit you, in order for us to converse a little and so on. Billy says and so on, yes, that's right, because with us, a talking shop or a question and answer game always arises from a conversation. But honestly, I'm happy about it. With you, it's just not like how it is with many human beings of Earth. With you, one can talk rationally about all possible things, while one can't do this, however, with many Earth twits. Samyaza says that is, indeed, a word of correctness, and I am glad that even I can be your conversation partner. And, which is very much of importance to me, you are an equal conversation partner for me, so I don't have to appear as an instructive power towards you. Billy says you are simply incorrigible. You always have to explain so many things to me, and yet you speak of the fact that you wouldn't have to instruct me. Don't you think, therefore, that your words are a bit too exaggerated? Samyaza says I have to contradict you there, because what I have to explain to you from time to time of all possible things, are usually things that you yourself have found out and for which you only want to have a confirmation or, it concerns matters that are no longer anchored on the earth in human memory, so I just newly bring them near to you. In many cases, you have simply forgotten such things because you could no longer occupy yourself with them over the decades or because you eliminated them due to large overloads. But up to the present hour, I truthfully had to explain only very few fundamentally new things to you or teach you these. Billy says you say that so certainly that I cannot doubt it. Samyaza says sure, you can harbor no doubts about it because you know very well that my words are based on truth. Billy says okay, you win. Then I will immediately have a question I'm sure you know that since your grandfather's fast's time, I've occupied myself with catalysm and always add up or calculate all sorts of things. Samyaza says with admirable accuracy, as I must admit to you once. Billy says or with huge blunders and. Samyaza says as a rule, those are only small and do not arise because you would make wrong calculations. The falsities therein are always only the temporary unpredictable, rapidly changing circumstances, which even cause us the greatest difficulties in our probability calculations. Billy says okay, then it should be just as you say. Anyway, I've occupied myself with these calculations for almost 40 years, but I always have to make these in a somewhat time-consuming manner because I have to put the letters of the Latin alphabet, which are common and familiar to me, back into the original letters of the old Lyrian alphabet, in order to obtain the correct numerical values. Back then, However, Sfarth and Askit taught me about the fact that this basically isn't necessary because I can also work out and use the numerical values from the Latin alphabet. At that time, the numerical values for this alphabet were also mentioned to me, but I've forgotten these in the meantime because since then, I've only used the formula taught to me at that time. But now, I am also well aware that many earth twits have likewise dealt with Kabbalism for many centuries and millennia and have compiled a great deal about this calculation technique, but in old times, the true numerical values were lost in part through destruction by fire or other loss. Years ago, however, I found a book by an old count, who called himself Shero and who wrote the Book of Numbers. One also explained to me once, I believe it was Quetzal or you yourself, that these numbers are sometimes correct but, nevertheless, sometimes also incorrect. As I recall, 
It was also said that through these Shero numbers, interestingly enough, also various calculations could be produced nearly correctly, although crude miscalculations would come about. A phenomenon that one could not explain. Here, I've written down these Shero numbers on this slip of paper. I'll read them out to you quickly. R equals 1. B equals 2. C equals 3. D equals 4. E equals 5. F equals 8, G equals 3, H equals 5, I equals 1, J equals 1, K equals 2, L equals 3, M equals 4, N equals 5, O equals 7, P equals 8, Q equals 1, R equals 2, S equals 3, T equals 4, U equals 6, V equals 6, W equals 6, X equals 5. Y equals 1. Z equals 7. Now, as one explained to me once, the denominator 9 is missing in this number assessment, but also at least two-thirds of the numbers should have incorrect values for the letters, which then even leads to inaccurate results and values. Also, various calculation forms and calculation formulas are not right from which fundamentally incorrect end data and values arise, as I've found with different calculations. For example, it is well known to me that the name falsely ascribed to Ye Manuel, Jesus Christ, must yield the addition number 18 in both words, while according to Shero's calculations, however, the value 18 arises for Jesus and the number 24 represents Christ. I have also noticed such errors in other assessments. In the case of the effective number for the name Jesus Christ, Shero comes to the threefold value 888, although this would have to be the effective number 666, as this would also have to be the case for the designations, Pope, Church, and God, etc. Also, Shero writes nothing of the fact that the calculation of this effective number must be calculated in consequence that the addition number must be divided by 3, and then the corresponding resultant number must be strung together, in order to yield the effective number. So for example, if 18 is taken and is divided by 3, then the result 6 arises. Now, 6 is located in the addition result 3 times, consequently, these three sixes have to be strung together as a sequence number, so therefore as 666, which then embodies the effective number. But now, if the same values result in two successive names, words, or designations, then these become the absolute certainty that is fulfilled in effect, which is why this number is then also referred to as the certainty number or as the catastrophe number, if it is in the negative aspect, but which in this form, in the catastrophic, is only the case with the effective number 666 which expresses itself twice, however because it appears in two different names at the same time and, thus becomes the certain catastrophe number, the number of death, elimination, and destruction. But no indication of this is found in Shero's book, on the contrary, it is rejected due to incorrect calculations. I can only imagine that Shero, although he gave numerical values that come very close to the truth, had bad religious tendencies, which is why he just created or even falsified everything accordingly. In my opinion, only about half of his numbers mentioned are likely to be right in truth. Semiaza says your thoughts and assumptions, even in this case, are based in a logical construction. In the first months of our acquaintance, you brought me a copy of this book, which is why we talked about these issues once during which I also explained to you that this man, Shero, in all forms of his collected Kabbalistic assessments, lies very close to the truth, but that very many errors are still contained therein, but surprisingly, and in a way that is inexplicable to us, these sometimes generating results that are rather close to the truth. Thus, it was I, who spoke with you about it at that time. Even then, I wanted to give you the exact numerical values for your alphabet but then we quickly got off of this subject, which is why we both, in turn, let these issues fall into oblivion and didn't discuss them again. But now, I will gladly give you the right numerical values, 
for they are familiar to me. This is the list of all the values in detail. A equals 2. B equals 9. C equals 1. D equals 5. E equals 5. F equals 8. G equals 9. H equals 1. I equals 1. J equals 1. K equals 8. L equals 5. M equals 4. N equals 5. O equals 7. P equals 6. Q equals 8. R equals 2. S equals 3. T equals 1. U equals 6. V equals 6. W equals 6. X equals 5. Y equals 1. Z equals 7. These are the true numerical values for your alphabet. You recognize that Shero actually gathered quite a lot of numerical values correctly when you consider the total number and, in addition, the great effort and work that he had, in order to find these numerical values. Of all the numbers, only ten of these are incorrect, which means a lot when one considers how Shero had to strive to ascertain all these data or to fathom them. Sixteen numerical values correspond to the correctness, as you know now, and these are basically the ones that during calculations, often lead to results that are close to the truth when they are used. But these correctness calculations with Shero's numerical values truly need to be tackled very carefully, because the remaining ten incorrect ones still bring about bad errors. Also, Shero's calculation formulas and ways of calculating don't always correspond to the correctness, but they can be used to about 50%. Nevertheless, planetary calculations concerning horoscopic evaluations must be handled extremely carefully if the wrong calendrical support prevailing on the Earth is taken for assistance, because this incorrect timetable is divided into only 12 months of 30, 31, and 28 or 29 days. Billy says ah, I also still wanted to come to speak on that, but I have not yet finished my calculations for that. Semiaza says you can save yourself those, because I can give you the necessary clarifications for that. Billy says no, I would first like to figure out the things myself. As far as I know, however, our entire calendar isn't right because in truth, there should be 13 months per year. Semiaza says sure, that's right, and if you want, you can, of course, create your calculations first, before I give you information about it. Billy says that is dear of you, but I still have another question we once spoke a few words about antimatter in the human body and in any other life form. At that time, however, it wasn't enough to be able to make me a proper picture of it. In this respect, can you perhaps explain to me once again how this antimatter originates in the body of a life form and becomes effective there, so that the life form ages? To my knowledge, you said at that time that this tiniest amount of antimatter goes through an extremely rapid decay process and becomes formed in the brain of any life form as a certain acid combination. Semiaza says you evidently listened rather well when we exchanged a few words about these matters at that time, but you've confused antimatter with the word acid matter. Billy says unfortunately so, and apparently, we had also talked about it, without it later being transmitted in the report. Semiaza says sure, that's right because it was one of those conversations which we carried on confidentially and which were not transmitted to you. But now, since terrestrial science will also soon get to the bottom of this secret that is still unknown to them, I can give you more detailed explanations about it as I already explained to you at that time, and I'm now proceeding from the human life form alone, a very specific acid forms in the brain, which we call, in our language, lecatron. This acid is responsible for the aging process of human beings. This lecatron acid already begins to form in the brain of a human being as soon as one reaches his or her full human body function in the still pregnant womb. Nevertheless, the formation of this acid at this point in time still takes place in such a tiny amount that it practically cannot be analyzed. With the progressive age of the life form, however, the brain's own production of the lecatron acid increases, which, 
as said, is gene contingent, by what means an aging process of the physical body begins, which lasts for decades or centuries or even thousands or tens of thousands of years, depending on the life form and its possible age. This legatron acid forms in itself a special and split-off form of the normal acid matter, but in such a minutely small quantity that it can only be held and analyzed with technical means of highest precision. It. Billy says one moment, please. Will our Earth scientists also be able to assess that in the foreseeable future? Semiaza says are you thinking of an analysis of the tiniest quantity of acid matter? Billy says exactly. Semiaza says no, for that they still need a number of years, which will line themselves up to a decade or even more. The legatron acid, however, they will already be able to separate out in a very short time, which means that they will then tackle valuable experiments with regard to a life extension of the human being of Earth. These experiments will also lead to the fact that they will contain or slow down the production of the legatron acid, after they have deciphered the genes, which will happen within several years. Billy says and, will they then name this funny acid, legatron acid? Semiaza says hardly, because this designation comes from our language. Billy says oh, yes, of course. Just go on. Semiaza says now, as I already explained, a variation of the normal acid matter forms in the legatron acid, but in an nearly immeasurable quantity. This acid matter comes about by a very specific acid concentration, whose process I may not explain or reveal, however. This acid matter exhibits a rapid decay and is, in various forms within itself, differently constituted than the normal acid matter which appears in all life forms and is also produced in the human being of earth and which stores itself in the cells, alters these, and lets them die. Legatron acid matter produces a faster transformation process than a gene contingent form of energy that causes living cells to die. Billy says by that, do you mean that basically the genes determine the age of a human being but at the same time, through his or her programming, a special acid matter originates, through which the cells are attacked and brought to death? Semiaza says sure. Billy says um this funny acid matter in the human brain, which, indeed, brings its radiation over the entire physical body, doesn't eat at the body matter itself? By that, I mean whether it doesn't simply transform the body matter, if one may so say that, slowly but systematically into energy? Semiaza says no, at least not directly in the form that you evidently mean. Only the cells. Billy says so indirectly. Probably by the fact that the body matter, after death, undergoes a change process, which transforms it into energy and dust, etc., right? Semiaza says that's right, sure. The legatron acid exhibits a rapid decay phenomenon, as I already explained, and also exhibits its abnormalities, which prevent a direct change of the cell into pure energy. One can say that this concerns a form of aging acid or aging matter, which comes about by constant change processes of the widest variety of brain acids, if the legatron acid forms, which can be influenced only by gene manipulation or by chemical processes from the outside. Thus, the human being is also given the possibility of intervening in these processes and of controlling the aging process. And the human being of Earth will already soon be so far, because he is already on the way to fathom these secrets further and to make his discoveries. Already very soon, the human being of Earth will become master over these things. Billy says then something will, indeed, soon arise. But now, another question a long time ago, I once asked you for the total number of all elements in the universe. At that time, you told me that you wouldn't be allowed to give any information about that unless the exact number would be found out by the human beings of Earth themselves. Now, again to the question about the number of elements and whether there is a star in the universe, where all these elements are found together? Semiaza says there is no such star, because that would be against the laws of creation. Billy says ah, good. 
Is it right that the total number of elements is 280? Semyaza says how did you come across this result? Billy says it wasn't me, my child, but Guido. For my part, I've only calculated that this number must, indeed, correspond to the correctness because it has been found that this number, multiplied in a sevenfold form with the original height of the Giza pyramid, results in the current speed of light to the tenth place exactly. Semyaza says you are simply unbelievable. The number of the elements is just as correct as also your calculation with the sevenfold multiplying of the original pyramid height. The end result actually yields the exact number of the present light constant. Billy says how Guido actually came across the number 280, that I don't know exactly. He only wrote me a calculation formula. It's important there. However, that the base number 280 is right, with which I could calculate further and do some checks. So I simply applied the pyramid height number to this 280 and then multiplied the result in a unique sevenfold form, from which then the result of the speed of light arose. Semyaza says you shouldn't make these results known too much yet, however. Billy says you mean that I should remain silent about it. Semyaza says sure, at least about the numerical values of the real original pyramid height. Up to now, this is still unknown to the terrestrial scientists of certain fields of knowledge, and it wouldn't be good if they would get to know these already now. In two to three years, however, this number being made known won't play a large role anymore. Until then, however, you should be careful. Billy says so far, those who deal with these things reckon with completely incorrect data regarding the pyramid height, resulting in false conclusions and new, incorrect results. Semyaza says sure, but all these things are much more widely branching than you might imagine at the moment. The data of the pyramid extend into physics and into many other sciences. And these data provide basic formulas for very specific calculations which lead to tremendous inventions of all kinds and to enormous progress. But if these inventions and progresses would already be initiated now by revealing the true data, then the determined path of evolution would be disturbed, by what means an even very much greater catastrophe would be triggered on Earth by the human beings of Earth than what might be the case in the coming future. The mentioning of the true data would lead to calculations and insights that would point the terrestrial sciences to ways and possibilities, of which they are not yet master and which could, therefore, only end in a hopeless catastrophe. Billy says I understand, then I must be on the alert that no group member divulges these data, because one or two persons know them. Semyaza says you absolutely must refer them to the necessary silence. Billy says I will do that. But this only refers to the pyramid data, right? Semyaza says sure, it only concerns that. Billy says well, those would have actually been the questions for today, which were of burning interest to me. Here, this is another letter from the core group. You are to read it and to tell me whether that which is contained in it is right and good. Semyaza says what does it concern? You know that we no longer let ourselves get involved with any letters, etc. Billy says oh, you know, it is on account of me, because you so awkwardly picked on me, regarding a rent. This is now probably such a contract, by which I am to be released from a rent. Semyaza says that is very good. Wait, I'll read it immediately that is very good. Really, that is very good. Do you know the contents? Billy says no. I have only brought the stuff for reading and have given it to you, because I promised it. Semyaza says you also shouldn't read the contents for the time being. Will you assure me this? Billy says of course, if you want. Semyaza says it is my wish. Billy says well then, I will not read the scribblings. At the same time, I just ask myself, why shouldn't I do that? Semyaza says because I know what your reaction to it will be. You wouldn't be in agreement with the contents, even though they are extremely correct and absolutely purposeful and relevantly right. 
Billy says ah, then I had better edit yet. Semyaza says you have already pledged your word to me. Billy says oh damn it. I was probably a bit too hasty. Nice, laudable things must, indeed, be written there. You have properly pulled a fast one on me. Just wait, you've still got something coming to you for this, you hellion. Just you wait. Semyaza says this pleases me. This really pleases me, finally, I also got you once. You. Billy says you already speak like an earth twit, but nevertheless, your malicious pleasure certainly won't last long. Semyaza says ha ha ha, but still, I am pleased. You've really fallen into my trap. Billy says you are simply fantastic. Where did you get this phrase? Semyaza says from who else but you? For a long time, I've had this phrase ready and waited for the moment when I could bring it to use. And now was the opportunity for it. Billy says okay, then you should take your pleasure in it. But you still a hellion. Semyaza says it is a great honor for me. Thank you very much. Billy says you get better and better. But this pleases me, to me, everything seems to be as before. Human child, it all really makes me tremendously happy. Semyaza says I am also very happy about that, my friend. But now, I must go back, because I have urgent obligations to take care of. Billy says understood. I also still have all sorts of things to do. The 40 minutes with you will already claim some effort from me because I still have to carry on a conversation with someone or even with two people. Nevertheless, I am tremendously glad that you visited me. Semyaza says if your time is short then I can put you back by a time manipulation, so that you are back in your workroom about 10 minutes after you left it. Billy says you mean, after you took me out of there and moved me up here. Well, I'm in agreement with that. But one more question what is the situation now with the center times? And what about Beat and Vreni? Do they, as new core group members in the center, because they will already be these in about two months, have to go to America? Semyaza says they are exempt from that. Their storage and registration also shouldn't take place until a much later point in time. Concerning the times, you can announce what we have discussed recently. Quetzal has regulated the relevant matters and works. Billy says oh, many thanks, that saves us some trouble and fuss. Then I will go now and will still give you rather dear greetings from all the group members, who are tremendously happy that you came back today. Semyaza says also give them my dear greetings and wishes. Till we meet again, my friend. It was a very special joy for me today. Till we meet again, and you will now be back in your workroom again 30 minutes earlier, when you leave here now. Billy says thanks, and greet everyone rather dearly for me. Bye, girl, bye. The End